The Red Pill Fairy, Episode 1 The Evil Clergyman and the Myth of Homophobia Do you like to travel? I sure do. I mean, not like some, where you strap on a backpack with your toothbrush and your MacBook and just turn your boxers inside out and outside in every two weeks as you never stay longer than three days in any given place. All because you really want to brag back home about having seen 200 plus countries. Not like that. But I've been around the place. Have you ever noticed that corner shop clerks seem to, more often than not, display this singular and peculiar attitude where they don't say a word, bag your stuff, take your money, hand you your change all without ever taking their eyes off that little TV next to the register. Doesn't matter if that reflection you see in their eyes shows Takeshi's Castle, Keeping Up with the Carcrashians, a Spanish telenovela, or a soccer game. Over and over they provided you with all sorts of starchy anti-food, without ever knowing your face. As a German who was raised on the sentiment of I paid you, now dance, which makes up a great part of that German charm that makes us oh so beloved and sought after in touristy places around the globe. Not. I used to take great offense at that. But then 2015 rolled along, and there wasn't a single second of good entertainment to be found. Plenty of misandric garbage full of annoying, strong female characters. But not a single second of entertainment which left me with plenty of time for contemplation. And as I contemplated, the reason to why I was suddenly revolted by the idea of ever setting foot into a cinema ever again, after a brief detour through the teachings of Jordan Peterson and the YouTube algorithm incessantly misconstruing him as some sort of pro-male figure, the likes of Barbarossa, Liberation Y, Sandman, and eventually Paul Elam were one by one presented to me in my YouTube feed. That was in late 2019. Let's just say when in March 2020 the world finally gave up all pretense that it's not beyond dysfunctional and beyond saving, whatever that means to the individual, I gave up all hope to ever return to the blissless life in Blue Pill La La Land. You ever had your worldview shattered? by something as seemingly benign as a YouTube video? I sure did. It didn't take a nasty divorce. It didn't take a false allegation. It didn't even take direct involvement by a card-holding member of the sisterhood. All it took was a deep-seated suspicion that something is fundamentally screwed and staggeringly awry between the sexes. Well... And having a f- can't say that on YouTube for a mother and a f- can't say that either for a father and eleven years of misandric unpleasantries in the German school system might also have had something to do with it. And as comparatively slow and gradual my red pilling was, it still very much felt like getting a red pill enema with the fire hose. I grew up hating breeders. I grew up believing they must be all like my father, void of any personality of their own, only existing to toil and play a tag dog for the petty and capricious tantrums of the holy... Not saying we don't have those poor unfortunate souls floating around the place in unnameable numbers, but I don't really feel resentment towards them anymore. The simp army is now more like the weather to me. Just carry your damn umbrella as there is little to no use complaining. And as that metaphorical firehouse kept pumping me full of all those uncomfortable truths, my perception of the world was turned on its head. Have you ever pretended not to see the unkempt stranger trying to garner your attention on the street? Have you ever waved them off, hardly looking at them at all? I sure did. Today, that fills me with shame. Because once you realize you're a man, and so are they, suddenly my disdain for men was replaced with compassion. Compassion I used to reserve for the holy... 
in the same knee-jerk sort of fashion as any garden variety simp. <laughs> believe me, not all of them want your money. And not all of them are off their face. They're just men. The men that this society that values things and appearances over truth and results has left behind. And all they really want is for someone to acknowledge their existence and indulge them in a brief and trivial conversation. I knew that my dog looked like a pony that drools too much. I knew that when I got her. What I didn't know was that for some, that's the best they can come up with when trying to start a conversation. All the annoyance I felt about being reminded half a dozen times a day that my dog looked like a drooling pony was self-inflicted. What's my point, you wonder? Well, you should see how their faces light up when you respond with a facetious, yes, I noticed, instead of a, I don't carry change. And you should see the spring in their step when they walk away to attend to whatever the day might hold for them. I feel like a complete piece of shit. Excrement when I think that I used to deny myself and my brothers these simple pleasures just because I bought into this don't give them anything, they just spend it on regulated substances nonsense well let them <laughs> it's hard enough sober as it is isn't it and for the sake of intellectual honesty by the way, another term you can put in your red pill arsenal alongside red pill arsenal that is I guess my formerly plugged-in brain mapping the loathing I harbor for my father the vaginally motivated onto my perception of almost all my encounters probably didn't help either. So there I was, sitting cooped up in front of the very same laptop I wrote this talk on, for months on end going through one video after the other, as the zombies that used to be my fellow countrymen daddled by outside my window, their broken and disheartened expressions thinly veiled by their Fauci diapers. I kept watching. Indiscriminately. Even silly stuff like vaginally motivated in cars, fresh and f***ed in the head, and even a little rollover Tomasi. I come on now, I was a freshly minted MGTOW and frankly, a little desperate. Red pill rage, anyone? Oh, and since we're throwing around red pill terminology, here's another. Red pill isolation. That's a tricky one. Getting red pilled seems to have a similar effect as getting married. You just want to bloody shout it from the rooftops all day long. I recommend you don't. The more you display self-care, self-preservation, self-respect and all the other self-so-and-sos that a man unit in service of the holy yeah. isn't supposed to display, especially not in earnest, your blue friends will fade away in due time. No need to make a spectacle of yourself. So there I was, still, trying to wrap my head around the fact that men are human too. The problem was, you can either believe that or you can believe in all that LGBTQYXZ barbecue hyphen alien hieroglyph community victim narrative nonsense. It's either or. Eventually, on another grey and dreary day in feminist Germany, it's still in the firm grasp of our most recent crisis toujours, I came across a mention of just a place where, and I quote, red pill isolation goes to die. XY crew. Link below. So I found myself a lost little f adrift in the space between blue pill delusion and red pill philosophy. Once the biggest heterophobe imaginable driven straight into the arms of the enemy by the realization that the celebration of victimhood that the rainbow crowd had grown into will lead me nowhere but head first into a brick wall. Painted in hot pink and sprinkled with plenty of glitter, but, well, a brick wall regardless. It might have felt a little bit like Nora Vincent might have felt when she shrouded herself in the garb of the enemy to seek insight and understanding wherever it might lead her. 
Well, me interacting with all those men who were nothing like my meow. ridden father surely led me to a realization I never expected to find. Homophobia is a female issue. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. Homophobia is a female issue. First of all, no one is afraid of you. Most men really could not care less about where you stick it. You know what these loudmouth blue pill simsters care about? The disapproval of the holy vagina. Meow. And no one disapproves more of men that are immune to the siren song than women. Because we sing the song of freedom. We resemble the one thing women despise the most. A man having a good time without their involvement or approval. It's the women who shame these men into resenting you. They aren't scared of you hitting on them. They are scared shitless that they never hear the end of it from their female superiors should they get caught in the company of a outdated term for homosexual generally considered derogative. What are you gay now? That's what fragile masculinity really looks like. They need compassion, not more animosity. Their petty girlfriends got that covered already. Well, since this is probably going to get me cancelled anyway, let's keep going. Those men who are still blue pill but carry themselves with a modicum of individuality, they aren't scared of you either. If you show up with your yoga teacher haircut, painted nails in mute pink to compliment that pale yellow Ryan shirt over those eye cancer inducing orange shorts, a dangly purse and an attitude as obnoxious and over the top as the term for sexually promiscuous female generally considered derogative to bust at their apartment in a hissy fit last week, how could you expect them not to meet you with disquiet? After all, you're presenting as at least a mockery of women, at most as more one of Team Meow. than as one of them. They already had a tummy full of female nonsense. They don't need your fruity nonsense on top of it. You might think that's shallow, and maybe it is. But guess what, honey? Humans are shallow. Yes, you too. Now, what the fruitcake does that have to do with the XY crew? Well, three months I went and three months I LARPed as a breeder. And like Nora, I started to feel like a fraud. And I started to run out of gender-neutral euphemisms for boyfriend whenever the subject of my former relationships came up. How eerily similar their stories and mine ended up being might be a subject for another day. Needless, or probably rather indispensable to mention, those guys grew on me so quick and so fast, I was terrified of losing it all should come out that I, well, wasn't vaginally inclined after all. Nora said in her interview, and I quote, they really showed me up as being the one who was being judgmental because they were the ones who took me in, end of quote. Well, let's just say my little sexuality reveal celebration was the greatest anti-climax in Red Pill Fairy history. By then, it didn't matter, and I doubt it would have mattered at any other moment. I was already one of the bros, and so I should remain. Though it was as always humorous to find out who wouldn't have guessed in a hundred years and who suspected me to be a descendant of Uranus the very moment they first laid eyes on me. I had befriended the enemy and it turned out to be the most wholesome experience of my life. After that, excrement got even better. With now there being no secrecy left between us, and I already resilient and impenetrable where the locker room banter was concerned, something unexpected happened. Instead of a, oh shut up, uh. the hell you know, the fact that I bring a brand new perspective to the table, dealing with Western women without desiring any of them and being fellow man and outsider in equal proportion, enriched our experience. 
One of them keeps saying he thinks every breeder needs a gay wingman to give him the elbow whenever he's about to stick it into crazy. Oh, honey, look at her. She's a three without makeup. A little rain and you have a wet golem as arm candy. Spare yourself the post-nut trauma and let lady regret in the making ruin someone else's day, huh? Three years and counting, I now have a circle of friends that circles the planet. And even though I haven't yet met them all in person, I never felt closer to anyone than those guys. For the simple fact that when honesty meets compassion, something magical is the result. One of the guys keeps calling the place the Red Pill Dojo. I find that metaphor most befitting, because, metaphorically speaking, we keep beating the ever-loving excrement out of each other. And every time, without fail, if you're strong enough to appreciate that every experience, including the unpleasant ones, holds an opportunity for growth, we emerge out the other end stronger for having gone through it. Metaphorical bloody nose and all. But enough already about me. Have you ever had your whole worldview turned on its head? I sure did. So next time the evil clerky man backs your stoner snacks without a word or glance, next time that stranger who looks a little too close to an unwashed Santa Claus tries to entangle you in harmless chit-chat, remember, you're a man and so are they. Men who strive to wrestle a little satisfaction out of a life in a world that doesn't care if they live or discontinue their existence. Just like you do. Don't leave your brother in the lurch. His ex-wife got that covered already. Nora also said something I now understand more than I ever thought possible. She said, they, that being men, need each other more than anything. They need to be together. She was right. We need to be together. So, brother, if you need a breather from the crazy, if you are ready to join us in reality, our door is always open. Thanks for listening. If you like this content, please leave a like, the most important metric employed by YouTube. Subscribe and maybe leave a comment. Won't cost a thing. If you wish to support me further, please check out my Subscribestar page. See you next time.